Welcome back. If you've just joined us, you're watching the news at 10 live on Channel Television Lagos. A quick reminder of our top stories now. President Muhammad Buhari seeks support from global powers to tackle Africa's major challenges of poverty and corruption as he addresses the United Nations General Assembly. Senate invites Mr. Minister of Justice Abubakar Malami for updates on the failed PNID oil contract, even as the federal government delegates move to quash suits ahead of tomorrow's core hearing on the matter in London. Court orders release of Sahara Reporters publisher Amol Yele Shore after spending more than 45 days in custody for alleged treasonable charges. And British Prime Minister Mr Boris Johnson rejects Supreme Court ruling declaring his decision to suspend Parliament unlawful but says he would respect it. For more information on our top stories and others, please visit our website at channelstv.com. YouTube.com forward slash channelsweb has videos of our shows. And to some of the pictures that you sent in, uh, what you see now, we're expecting that to come through, and that's it, is not a natural river, but one resulting from poor road networks and bad drainage. This image is from Denro in Ogun State. Now, residents have to ferry across that road they once drove and walked on. This is according to our eyewitness reporter, who is lamenting the deplorable state of that road, is asking the Ogun State government to look in their direction and end their pain, which they suffer, and which the previous government promised to fix twice, but has failed. Our next image is from Obudu Road in Port Harcourt, the River State capital. It's also about the flood ravaged community. The pictures is showing school children walking through the flood. He's worried by the danger these children are exposing themselves to walking through dirty water. Finally, is this image from Wanikade in Cross River State. It's showing the mud house. Our eyewitness reporter describes as a school. He says that this is uh, the Itim. Uh, community primary school and one wonders how much can be learned in an environment such as this those are the pictures that you sent in we sincerely thank you and ask that you keep them coming the people's democratic party the pdp and its presidential candidate al haji atiko abubakar have filed an appeal challenging the judgment of the presidential election petition tribunal which dismissed their petition and affirmed the election of president muhammad buhari al haji Atiku Abubakar and his party failed the, filed the appeal on 66 grounds, alleging that the panel of the Presidential Election Petition Tribunal erred in law when they relied on overall interest of justice to hold that President Muhammad Buhari's exhibits R1 to R26, P85 and P86 were properly admitted in evidence. According to them, they pleaded and proved their allegations that the president gave false information of a fundamental nature to INEC in aid of his qualification. They further stated that they also pleaded that the military denied being in possession of the president's certificates. According to the plaintiffs, the president's failure to produce his certificates or attach same to form CF001 in the face of unequivocal, unequivocal denial uh, by the army that his certificates were in the possession and were, went to the roof of the allegation. In the meantime, the All Progressives Congress, the APC, has asked the Supreme Court to expunge documents and evidence tendered by the People's Democratic Party, the PDP, from the bar. Evidence sought to be erased were provided by witnesses 40, 59 and 60 presented by the PDP during proceedings at the Court of Appeal. In a cross appeal filed today, the ruling party also asked the Apex Court to set aside the decision of the Presidential Election Petitions Tribunal to admit the aforementioned evidence and documents. The cross appeal is an appeal filed by the defending party on the basis of an existing appeal. The development is coming after Al Haji Atiko Abubakar filed his appeal at the Apex Court. 
And staying with legal matters, the Court of Appeal in Abuja has reserved judgment in three separate appeals brought before it on the senatorial election of Senator Dino Milaye, which was last month quashed by the National Assembly Election Petition Tribunal in Kogi State. The three separate appeals were brought by the People's Democratic Party, the PDP, Independent Electoral Commission, INEC, and Dino Milaye, with the three of them praying the appellate court to set aside the majority decision of the tribunal which voided the elections of Senator Dino Milaye as senator representing Kogi West Senatorial District. Justice Dutti Yahaya, who presided over the three appeals, announced that the date for judgment delivery will be communicated to parties as soon as it is fixed. The PDP is asking the appellate court to set aside the majority decision of the tribunal against Senator Dino Milai on the grounds that he was denied fair hearing and refusal to evaluate evidence adduced during the hearing. The story of Africa has often been told in different negative forms, including famine, war and poverty, but that is gradually changing now as Africa's best and friends are poised to rewrite the narrative at the 2019 edition of the Future Africa Forum in New York. But now the endeavor to create Africa's new image is set to be boosted with the construction of the Africa Center in Harlem, New York. Our correspondent Anne Waldo tells us more from New York. It began with a meet and greet. But beyond that was the more serious business of reconstructing Africa's image in different critical areas targeting policy, business and culture. The journey which started a while ago was propelled by young Africans. Welcome to the Africa Center and welcome to the future. I see the past, present, and future of a region of the world, of a people, the complicated story of genesis, of movement, of migration and exploitation, of resilience, and most importantly, of imagination. Championing the realization of this project, Halima Dangote, Hadil Ibrahim and Chelsea Clinton have their eyes set on the timeline and are determined to push the project through. Our mission is to change the narratives of the people and the institution by, I would say, shedding light on the collective genius, resilience and accomplishments of our people and institutions. As you have all heard me say, everyone in the world is from Africa. So the Africa Center must be the home of the world. The world we are in today has such complex challenges that the only way we can hope to face them is together. The challenges of Africa have been enormous. These leaders and friends of the continent know what the issues are. They are actually talking of historical issues where now a lot of things have changed. There are quite a lot of uh, governments that have reduced taxes and co, you know, countries like uh, Ghana, they have reduced a lot of taxes and people are rushing in there to go and invest. Mm. And uh, up to now in Nigeria too, you know, we have quite a lot of people that are invested. If the growth rate of our population exceeds three or four percent per year, and when our population uh, or our economy is growing on average at two or three percent, we are just like running on a treadmill. We are running but going nowhere. As women get more educated, the demand for family planning goes up. As people move to urban areas, the demand goes up. So Africa today has the biggest gap between what women want in family planning and what's available for them. With a transformative $20 million donation by the Aliko Dangote Foundation, a $5 million grant from the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, and over $7 million from the Mo Ibrahim family, the Africa Center looks set to fulfill in its objective with the story of Africa sounding musical into the future.
stakeholders, businessmen and friends of Africa have gathered at the African Centre to discuss ways of improving Africa and improving Africans. But come 2021, this wouldn't just be a structure, but a place to unite Africa and unite Africans, telling the good story and one day changing the narrative. And Mwawado, Channels Television News. You're watching the news at 10 on Channels Television, reaching you live from Lagos. Let's cross over to our Abuja studios now, where Linda Kigwe is standing by to take us through a couple of more stories. Linda, good to see you. Hello, Gimba. Welcome to Abuja. The House of Representatives is to investigate the activities and sources of funding of non-governmental organizations for possible culpability on ending spate of insurgency in the Northeast. This was part of the resolutions reached when a matter of urgent public importance on increased funding for the nation's security agencies was raised in the Green Chamber. Our correspondent Terry Kumi reports. Mr. It's a day after the leadership of the House of Representatives met with the service chiefs behind closed doors to discuss the challenges faced by the security agencies in the fight against insecurity in the country. The resolutions from that meeting is raised as a matter of urgent public importance on the floor of the House of Representatives. I urge the federal government to create a special security fund for the security agencies apart from the national budget, mandate the leadership of the House of Representatives to interface with parliaments of other countries, especially the United States of American Congress, with a view to overcoming all regulations that bar Nigeria's security agencies from purchasing arms and ammunition from those countries and the United States of America. While the lawmakers support the motion, they raise strong questions. In Dambua, I have 10 electoral votes. Only one vote is not under the occupation of Boko Haram. This is as far as Chibok Dambua Goza federal constituency is concerned. Boko Haram population is less than 5% of the Nigerian soldiers. But because they are committed, maybe they are stimulated, they are ready to bring the war to our doorsteps. About $385 million have been uh, 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 wired for the procurement of tanks and other ammunition. We are also aware that that money is trapped. And we are not going to have those weapons. You'll be shocked. The Deputy Speaker raises suspicion over the activities of non governmental organizations in the Northeast. Today in Meduguri, some NGOs have taken hotel for the purpose of uh, their activity, paying upfront for 10 years. And this is coming because there is a support for international community. Through the meeting we had, I want to believe there are some people who are deliberately sabotaging the effort of government, sabotaging the effort of our, our, our very gallant soldiers who are in the field. A motion to regulate and investigate the activities of NGOs was raised in the 8th House of Assembly, but suffered a setback. After our meeting yesterday and the revelations from the security agencies in terms of the role some NGOs are playing and the, the fact that it has taken a another a security dimension, we may need to look at that legislation again. The House resolves to investigate the activities and sources of funding of the NGOs, and according to the Speaker, they will be invited for a discussion. Terry Ikumi, Channels Television News. And staying with security matters, the Nigerian Air Force attack aircraft has destroyed a Boko Haram terrorist camp at Abulam, a settlement on the fringes of the Alagano Forest in Borno State. According to the Air Force spokesman, Air Commodore Ibikunle Daramola, intelligence surveillance and reconnaissance missions revealed that some buildings within the settlement were being used by the terrorists to store their supplies and other resources. Subsequently, helicopter gunships and ground, at, ground attack aircraft dispatched by the Air Tax Force launched successive strikes on the location. According to him, they scored devastating hits on the target area, destroying several of the buildings and killing many of the Boko Haram terrorist occupants. The Air Force says it will sustain its efforts in concert with ground forces to completely destroy all remnants of terrorism in the Northeast. 
And when the news of 10 returns, British Prime Minister Boris Johnson rejects Supreme Court ruling, declaring his decision to suspend Parliament as unlawful, but says he will.